So this video is how to name organic molecules for Edexcel by GCSE. Um, I'm assuming you know the basics already, um, so I'm not going to go into how to, you know, MIF, EF, PROP, BUT, PENT, and hexane. the basics. We're going to look at ones where the chain is not a straight line. We'll start off by looking at this one, though, which is a straight line. So you can see uh, this is butane. You see there's four carbons in a row. Okay, so this is called four is BUT. Um, there's no double bonds, so we end it in A-N-E, butane. Uh, let's look at a isomer of butane. So this is C4H10. Isomers are chemicals with the same molecular formula, but a different arrangement. So what about if we took this carbon here and we attached it in the middle? Uh, I'm not going to bother drawing all the hydrogens um, because that's going to take time. But you can see there's one hydrogen there, 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 three there, one there, three there, three there. So it adds up to 10. It's an isomer. Anywho, to find uh, to work out the name, you need to find the longest chain. It doesn't have to be in a straight line. Um, for example, butane could be drawn like that. Can you see how the longest line of carbons looks like that? That's butane as well. It's just drawn at a weird angle. So find the longest straight line. The longest line doesn't have to be straight, sorry. So the longest line could be here or could be down there. Either one, doesn't actually matter which one you choose. As long as you find, you check all possible routes and find the one, longest amount of carbons in a line, it doesn't have to be straight. So one, two, three, or one, two, three. Either way is fine. Uh, for simplicity's sake, let's go for this one here. Okay, what is the name for free carbons? Well, free carbons is prop. So say prop, we'll just, um, there's no double bonds. So we're gonna call it propane. Okay, so we basically named the bit that I've circled in blue. But what about this one? How do you add that part to the name? Well, what you need to do um, is you first, oops, need to, let's write this out like this so I've got more space. So you look at how many uh, carbons are, are in this group. We call this group because it's coming off the main chain, a side chain. Can you see there's one carbon in the group? If there's one carbon, what's the word for one? Well, it's MIF. Because it's not the main chain though, we're gonna add a couple of letters and you need to do this. Because it's coming off, we're gonna add the letters Y and L. And we're not gonna put, oops, well, that space there, there's an L there. I'm not gonna put a space between them. It's just the MIF, Y, L, and then propane. So this is called methyl propane. Now, uh, the next thing I'm gonna tell you is sort of wrong when you go to higher level, but it, it, this is correct for GCSE. So what I want you to do is I want you to number all the carbons in the main chain, starting at one. So let's call this one number one, this one number two, and this one number three. And wherever that methyl group is located, you put that number, so in this case two, in front of the methyl. And then we separate any letters and numbers with a hyphen. Okay, so this is called two methyl propane. Now, you might be thinking, how did I know to start the number one on this side? What about if I start the number one on that side? Well, I could have done. That could be number one. That could be number two. That could be number three. In both situations, this is number two. So in both situations, this is still called 2 methyl propane. Okay, let's look at a situation where the numbering is not so simple. Well, actually, we can look at this easy one first. Okay, so this one here, find the longest chain. So you could go like that. But that's only four carbons. Can we find a longer chain? Well, yeah, obviously. That's five carbons, so therefore that's the longest chain. So five carbons is pent. There's no double bonds, so we call it, oh my God, can't draw with a mouse. So that's pentane. Find the side group. This is the side group. There's one carbon, so MIF. Add the letters to say that it's a side group, YL, so methyl. Maybe can't draw, that's an L, can't do Ls. Okay, uh, and then number the carbons. So one, two, three, four, Five, once you start numbering, you have to carry on. Or let's look at the alternative. That could be one that doesn't show up. Let's try it. this one black. One, two, three. Oh, either way, it turns out to be three. So this must be three methyl pentane. Right, now let's look at a situation where the numbering is a bit more tricky. So longest chain, you can clearly see five carbons. So pentane, let's write that down, pentane. Again, you can see there's one side group. It's got one carbon. So we call it methyl. Let's write that down. So methyl, but the numbering. Okay, there's two ways to number this. Let's start off with the wrong way and then explain why it's wrong. So let's start off here. One, two, three, four, 
five okay it's not to say you can never net start naming from the right hand side you totally can you totally have to sometimes but in this situation this carbon's number four so this becomes four methyl pentane so why is it wrong well always check both directions and see which side gives you gives you the lowest possible combined numbers i'll say that again so do both sides let's do the other side one two three four five and now this carbon here with the methyl group on it is on carbon two two is lower than four so therefore we actually call this one two methyl pentane there is no such thing as four methyl pentane that would be completely wrong this chemical is called two methyl pentane okay this one's a little bit of an extension i the specification says that you would not be asked one this difficult but just so you're aware you could be expected to draw this because this is an isomer of uh, pentane of C5H12, but you shouldn't be expected to name it. But just so you're aware how you do it, find the longest chain. Oops, why is my mouse gone dodgy? Let's try that again. Okay, so longest chain, three carbons. Could also be down here, three carbons. Either way, doesn't matter. It will come to the same name. Okay, this time you can see we've got two side groups, not one, but two. Okay, they both got one carbon in it, so they're both called methyl groups. The longest chain in red is propane. Okay, uh, because they're two in chemistry, uh, we, all, we use the word generally for one, we say uni or mono. Uh, two is di, uh, three is tri, four is tetra, pentahexa, etc. So there's two of these methyl groups, so we're going to call it di methyl or methyl if you're American. Don't forget the Y and the L. No space between this P and this. This is all lowercase, by the way. There should be no space. Please excuse my rubbish writing. Um, and then let's number the, number the carbons again. So this is carbon one, carbon two. If we go the other way, that's carbon one, still carbon two. Okay, so they're both on carbon two. Now, there's two of them. Uh, and the way that naming works, um, the rules that we use, and these rules that are set out as international rules to make sure we're all talking about the same chemicals so we don't have mistakes, because it would be awful to order one chemical and get another one. That could get very dangerous very quickly. Okay, so the rules are that when you have two groups, each group must have its own number. So although they're both on carbon two, we don't just call it two methyl dimethyl propane, we call it two two, because we have to have one number for one of them. So this is the number for, say, this one, that's the number one with the bottom one bottom one we separate numbers with a comma uh, so numbers separated by commas letters and numbers separated separated by hyphens however in the exam you will not lose marks if you forget that and put a comma or hyphen in the wrong place uh, from my experience all the mark schemes have said that punctuation they just ignore basically but the correct way is um, comma between numbers hyphen between numbers and letters Okay, the, here's, uh, these are alkenes. We can tell they're alkenes because they've got a double bond between two of the carbons. So alkenes are named slightly differently to alkanes. They end in E-N-E -E as opposed to A-N-E. Okay, but they're named quite the same. We do need to say where the position of the double bond is. Okay, so this has got longest chain. So it's bute, but it's not butane anymore because it's got a double bond. It's butene. And I'm going to leave a space there because we've got to say uh, with some numbers where the double bond is. Can you see the double bond is between carbon one and carbon two? Or if you named the other way around, if you numbered, say, say this was one, two, three, and four, then it's between three and four. Remember, always go for the lowest possible numbers. So that means that one in red is incorrect. You always want the lowest possible numbers. So we're going to go for one and two. And again, the carbon is said to belong to again the lowest possible number so it's between one and two but we say it's on carbon one so this would be called bute one in now remember what separates numbers and letters hyphens so we put the hyphens in between there so this is called bute one in at this point uh you start pausing the video and trying to name them yourself it's a really really good practice and you can see my thinking after you've had your own go so pause the video have a go at this one okay brilliant so this one Longest chain, four. Double bond is on carbon, two. Doesn't matter which way we go, still on carbon, two. So this is called bute, two, in. Okay, moving on. Okay, uh, more examples. Uh, here we got, again, pause the video, try this yourself. This one here is called longest chain, five, one, two. It's on carbon, two. If we went the other way around, one, 
two, three. That's we always want a number with the lowest possible numbers. So this, this is the correct. This must be number one. This must be number two. Okay. Otherwise, it'd be called but three. But so it would be called pent three in versus pent two in. Pent two in is lower. So let's go for that. So this is pent. Little double bond. That's that part there. It's on carbon two. In to show it's a double bond. Remember, in tells you it's an alkene or an alkane. Okay. Again, pause the video. Try this one. Okay. Longest chain. Ah, longest chain. The longest chain is this one here, but the longest chain has to contain these special functional groups. So say you had a weird example where actually maybe there was more carbons coming down here and it actually turned out to be a longer chain. You still have to choose this one circled in red as the longest chain. Actually, to be honest, you totally don't need to know that. That's going beyond GCSE. Okay, they, they won't do anything like that to you. Anyway, so this one here. So longest chain is butte, double bond, one two or one two so either way it's on carbon two in we've got this uh side group here it's a methyl group so let's call it methyl it goes at the front by the way the names at the front we call these things at the front of a word a prefix anything at the back of a word is called a suffix and this is called a prefix um what carbon is it on well if we number this carbon one two it's going to be on carbon two or if we went this way, one, two, three, it's on three. Again, what's the lowest possible one? The double bond doesn't mind. Either way, it gets carbon two. So it would prefer us to number this way, one, two, to give it the lowest possible name. So this is called 2-methyl-butene. This one here, again, longest chain. Oh, the longest, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, so four carbons, so butte. You can see it's on carbon one, butte one in two three ah, i should explain this actually a little bit more I, again i really don't think they'll give you one this difficult but this they they, poss they possibly could here actually so you might be thinking hang on a minute if i number this one carbon one that one carbon two you know why don't i go that way that gives that the lowest lower number rather than two is lower than three well um the double bond takes priority so the double bond Wherever the double bond carbon is, that will want the lowest possible number. So if we went from this, if we started numbering this one, number one, this one, number two, this one, number three, that would be called but three in. But three in is a higher number than but one in. The double bond takes priority and has to have the lowest number. Therefore, this has to be carbon number one. This has to be carbon number two, has to be three. Therefore, this is called three methyl but one in. Can't, I can never get the L in. There we go. Okay, wicked. Okay, uh, alcohols. Uh, so, alcohols, um, how are, they have the ending OL. Okay, so they're ending OL. Um, again, find the longest chain. Three. So, whoops, this is going to be called propan. No double bonds, so propan. And it's going to end in OL. So basically, you drop the E. Say this didn't have the um, the alcohol group, it would be called propane. So what we do is we actually get rid of this E, we drop it, and we replace it with the letters OL to tell us there's an alcohol group. Uh, can you see the alcohol group is on carbon two, so we call this prop two O. Have a go at this one. Longest chain three. This is called prop one O. Sorry, propan I should say. Propan one O. Now remember in organics every single letter matters if unfortunately if you're like me i'm very uh, dyslexic and have difficulty spelling um organics was the right pain to learn but you got it because you lose marks it is actually not that bad once you get the hang of it but every single letter matters okay this one here another alcohol this one's again i really doubt they give you something this hard in the exam but let's just do it anyway so we can see the longest chain is free or the longest chain is free there but remember you always want to have the functional groups that's these things on the longest chain which means the longest chain is going to be here to keep the functional group on it this takes carbon one this takes carbon two to, so we call this propan propan one oh one oh so that's carbon one that's carbon two and we've got a methyl group here so this is called 
to me file propan 1 l Okay, uh, cool. Uh, this is a carboxylic acid. So carboxylic acids have the functional group where you have a carbon with double bond O and then an O and an H. You might be thinking, hang on a minute, that's an alcohol group. It is. Uh, but when it's with a car when it's attached to a carbon with a double bond oxygen, we don't call it an alcohol group anymore. We call it a carboxylic acid. So if you ever see that sort of structure, you can see in this one it's in reversed, but it's still the same thing. This is a carboxylic acid group. You'll notice that carbon has three bonds already taken up with adding to the oxygen. So it's always going to be at the end of a chain, either end. To call something which is a carboxylic acid, you drop the E like we did before with uh, propane. So this is also propane, three carbons. But we drop the E and we replace it with oic space acid. Oic space acid. So this is propan, drop the E, add in OIC, oic, and then a space acid. So this is propanoic acid. If I added another carbon here and a bunch of hydrogens, butanoic acid. Here's one that 100% they'll never give you this one, but just so you're aware, this one here, you can see there's a side chain here. This is carbon one, so this would be called 2 methyl propanoic acid. Propanoic acid. Okay, this one here, right, uh, last, functional, last functional group is an ester. This is the most complex. Uh, so esters have the functional group where you have a carbon with a double bond, then you have an oxygen with a single bond, and then this is, that's, we define this as the, as the uh, functional group, this is the ester, but this carbon here, this oxygen here, I should say, is always bonded to a carbon. So if you ever see what a functional group of an ester, a functional group of an ester is just that, COO, that's a structural formula, COO, but this, this part here has to be a carbon. And this part here could be anything, it could be a hydrogen or carbon. So you can see in this situation, it's drawn uh, back to front, or back to front to where I draw it there. So you can see here, we've got the, uh, the main ester part. I'll circle the main part, which is the ester. Let's just uh, rub some stuff out. So the ester part, you can see the C double bond O, and the C, but just, that's the ester group. And then this has to be a carbon here. Okay, the way you name this. Okay, step one, find the carbon which is the main part of the ester, which has the double bond oxygen, this one here, and count how many carbons it's attached to, in this case, none. So it's just one carbon. What's the word for one? Meth. Okay, rather than writing methane, we're gonna drop uh, the E again, so methan, and to name an ester, you call it O8. An ester is O8. So we're gonna add, drop the E for methane, and replace it with O8. So we've just named all of that part there. But what about this part here, which is attached to the singly bonded oxygen? Okay, the way you name that part is you again, this MEF. And because it's a side group, it's not the main chain, we add the letters YL, methyl. Uh, and then leave a space here. Again, don't worry if you don't, if you forget, you won't lose a mark for that, I don't think, but leave a space here for esters. So this is methyl methanoate. Okay, what about this one? Okay, find the carbon with the double bond. You can see on this time it's on this side. Name that part first. So we're naming this part here first. One carbon. So again, the same as before. Methanoate. Okay, that's an O. Now we're going to name this part here, which is attached to the singly bonded carbon, two, carb two carbons. So two carbons is ETH, add the YL to say it's a side group. So this is ethyl space methanoate. Okay, last one. Uh, this one here, find the carbon with the double bond. Count how many carbons it's attached to. So one, so a total of two. So that's ethanoate. Oops, that was meant to be uh, an O, not an A. O, eight. Find the carbon, find the singly bonded oxygen, see how many carbons it's bonded to in a line. One, so, oops, what am I doing? What the hell am I doing? So one is MEF, so add the YL, so methyl space F and it. And there you go, that's pretty much everything for organic nomenclature. Oh, actually, there's one more thing. 
Okay, final bit of naming is what if you've got a halogen attached on. So we call the halogens um, by the name essentially, and there we put them as prefixes at the front. Uh, so you've got fluorine, fluorine becomes fluoro. Uh, you've got chlorine, we name chlorine when it's on an organic molecule chloro. Bromine becomes bromo, iodine becomes iodo, etc. Okay, so this is an example with bromine. So you can see here we've got one bromine, we've got propane. We can see that the bromine's on carbon one, so this is called one bromo propane. If it was on the middle, what the hell am I doing? If it was on the middle, we'd call it two bromo propane. Where's the pen? Propane. Okay, in this instance here, we have two bromines. Okay, so this is propane still, but now there's two bromines. If you remember the word for two, di. So this is dibromo propane. But remember, we have to include numbers. This is on carbon one. You have to include each one cut one number for each group. So this is one comma one dibromo propane. And remember. Each group has to have its own number. So although they're both on carbon one, we still need to include two numbers. So one comma one dibromopropane. If there were three bromines here, we would call this one 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 hyphen tribromopropane. It would be one comma one comma, oops, one comma one um, comma one tribromopropane. Okay, what about this one? They're on different parts of the uh, molecule. So in this case, again, longest chain propane, so it's still propane. There's two of them, so it's still dibromo. Dibromo. Let's number them. So I could number this one, number one, number two. So you can see one is on one, one is on two. So it becomes one comma two hyphen dibromo propane. Again, we could number this number one, this one number two, this one number three, but those combined numbers add to a higher number. So we always want the lowest possible number. If there were four bromines on here, it would be called tetrabromine, five bromines pentabromine bromo so i should say five, six would be hexabromo and again if there were six you'd have to include six numbers let's imagine three were on here and three were on here that would be called one 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 three 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 hexabromo propane awesome